I like to give glory to God for making all this possible. Um, it's only by God that I'm standing here at this present time. Amen. It's only by God that I'm able to move. It's only by God that I have my well-being. It's only by God that I have a clear mind. Because why, without God, I'm, I don't know what I'll be. You know, and oftentimes we grew up in church and we hear those things um, said all the time and it just brush over our heads. But it's one thing to say, glory, glory, hallelujah, till I laid my burdens, that since I've laid my burdens down. But it's another thing to actually feel it, to have a testimony in the Lord. That's a beautiful thing, you know, and it's touching. It makes you cry, you know. It's a real beautiful thing. God can change a man, you know. God can really shape and mold him. Um, I remember it was a scripture, and I cried out to the Lord. And um, he took me to Jeremiah. My brother used to say this scripture all the time. I said, this man, love that scripture. He said, just as the, um, you know, clay is in the potter's hands, so is Israel in my hands. In other words, he could take something and break it down and mold it into something new. Amen. If anybody knows how people used to make um, pots and clay, I don't know if they still do it now. I mean, who knows? Machines do stuff now, but it's like a clay and it's like a wheel called the potter's wheel. Mm -hmm. And during the potter's wheel, you know, you um, it's wet. So obviously you can mold the clay and you heat it up. It becomes hard. So they... <laughs> They mold the wheel all together. The wheel spins and he uses his hands. He uses his hands to shape the item that he wants to create. If he wants to shape a bowl, he'll kind of go like this. If he wants to shape a plate, he kind of go like that. If he doesn't like how something look, he will break it down and he will start it over again. Mm -hmm. And a lot of us, we have been shaped by the world and the Lord has came in and he has broken me down <laughs> you know Amen. it's a humbling experience Amen. he has broken me down and you know he's beginning to shape and it's a you know patient process is a beautiful process but looking back god would do things that you would sit back and say i know it's the lord Amen. i remember we was at a church the false church and i presume or i perceive that the guy had a, a guy named jeremy had a revelation by god or whatever, a counter or a touch or a feeling or whatever the case may be. And he said that, I remember he was, you know, his mind be everywhere. I don't know if he lost his mind or he drunk something that he wasn't supposed to drink or whatever, but he, but I looked at him, it was as if he was in his right mind for that one time. He said, if somebody came to me with a million dollars and told me to say, God ain't real, he said, I would tear it up. He was crying. He said, I would tear it up and say, God is real. He said, nobody can not tell me God is real. And that's one thing that we deal with inside the church. Do you really believe that God is real? Has the word really took root inside your heart? A lot of people, they preach the word. A lot of people, they teach the word. A lot of people, they read the word. But, can, but if somebody came to you and offer you an offer and say, hey, I give you everything, just announce the Lord God. Are you able in your heart to say to yourself, you know what? God may not be real anyway. You get a lot of people, they sell their soul over to the devil. Mm -hmm. You get a lot of people because of persecution, they, you know, they're a weak. They go over to the side of the devil and they coward and they get angry. Um, they get sorrowful, whatever the case may be. And, you know, they catch you know, a, they hold a grudge, however the case may be, but deep down, they never believed God was real. Mm -hmm. They hear, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. But you know, these scientists may come, these archeologists may come and they just don't believe that the word is real. Mm -hmm. And so our lesson, which I'm gonna itemize the scripture today, mm -hmm. we're gonna teach it, we're gonna break it down. The lesson is gonna come out of, um, Matthew chapter 13, starting at verse 21. Amen. Tell me when you're there, and uh, my brother Nick, if you don't mind, just please yell loudly and read the scripture for me. Matthew chapter 13, verse 21. 
Yes, sir. Matthew chapter 13 and verse 21. Matthew anybody, chapter 13, verse 21. Hold it. If anybody who don't know me, my name is Brother John, or Minister John. Um, I was appointed a minister by um, my, the pastor, Nick. I just didn't run up here. Um, I just didn't feel like I can teach. Now, keep this in mind. When I first came into God, I was caught up in false religion. I found myself being on YouTube and started teaching or whatever. And, um, you know, I was taught that, you know, if you know the Bible a little bit, you can just get up and speak. However, God is very sacred. You know, a lot of people think that the mercy of God is freedom. A lot of people think that all oh, because of God's mercy, um, that means that God allowed, gives me the freedom to do what I want. No, that's not the case. That's his mercy. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like being in the museum. Everything you see in the museum is sacred, quote unquote sacred. If you touch it, you know, if you even breathe on it, they don't want you to touch it. They don't want you to breathe on the things they don't want you to touch. Or, you know, wherever the case may be, or your grandma's urn of ashes. You consider that sacred or quote unquote special. That's how God's house is, mm -hmm. you know? So, um, you know, I just didn't run up here being being that God has put placed me and added me to the true church, um, you know, I still don't even feel as if I'm ready. You know, I hear the word and it stings me in my heart. I say I'm not ready to be a minister. The, the, the requirements of praying, the requirements of reading and studying, waking up in the night and having just to pray, pray for people. Even when you call people, people want to teach. People want to go out and want to save a soul. Um, and, you know, when I be praying for people, they are spirits attack me. They spirits come on me and I got to get down. And I got to pray extra hard. And it got to the point where I told myself, I don't want to speak to that brother because I want to go to bed. I don't, <laughs> I, I don't want to, I don't want to be praying for no 30 minutes in an hour, you know, about some spirits this brother dealing with. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You know, having some friends and, you know, having to go and tell them the truth, you know, and, um, and, you know, having, knowing when to cut, cut people off. You know, you're going to have a lot of people where you, you know, your friends in the world and you trying your hardest and you and you super kind and compassionate in the world. Mm -hmm. But according to God, you're just wasting your time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and, you know, and if people are not like minded and that's what people say in the world. But if nobody want to follow this gospel, and yes, you have patience and pray for them. But, you know, the Lord will reveal if that person trying go want to follow that gospel. Amen. And, um. You know, and it's hard being the minister during that aspect because I don't feel like I'm ready. Um, you know, just thinking about the daunting task, I call it daunting because there's a lot of things that, you know, I have to come up to. But I thank God it's because I don't want to be that slothful, wicked servant. Amen. You know, <laughs> I don't want to be the one that buried my gift and then say I was afraid of you, Lord. I'll be a slothful and wicked servant. Amen. So let's go ahead and read for me um, Matthew chapter 23 and verse 21. My bad, I'm sorry. Matthew chapter 13 and verse 21. Matthew chapter 13, verse 21. Yet have he not root in himself. Amen. But during for a while, for when he when when tribulation or persecution arise, because of the word, by and by he is offended. Start right there. All right, we're gonna talk about persecution. We're gonna talk about tribulation. But first, as we're gonna break this down, first we're gonna talk about having root in the word. That's right. Now, we got a lot of coward Christians. We got a lot of sneaky Christians. We got a lot of Christians don't really know how to handle themselves during times of persecution. Now, when people think of persecution and tribulation on the other side, they will say, oh, that means that I can't be a coward. However, that also means is that you don't react well during the persecution. You want to get revenge. You get angry at God. A brother told me a story. He said that um, he surrendered over to the Lord, or so-called surrendered to God, and the, and his friends, his so-called friends, um, practically made fun of him, or whatever the case may be, and started talking about God. And he gave up on the faith. He gave up. He said that, you know, I'm, I'm presuming, you know, if God was real, his friends came to him and, you know, they have their words about God by him being unfair and unrighteous and why he allowed this. And he was like, people are talking about me being inside the faith or whatever the case may be. But he received the word rejoice. So, you know, when 
you're dealing with persecution and tribulation, it's very important that this is spoken to when you come into the faith. Because a lot of people preach belief. But you can't preach belief and not preach the whole gospel. People don't understand. The whole gospel is belief. If you look at the book of James, he said, by works is faith made perfect. Amen. Works of what? What are you working in? A lot of people say, I got faith. Faith in what? What you got faith in? It's a word. It's a word. That's why he said faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. What word did you hear? People condense the gospel to John 3 and 16. Jesus died for our sins. He is the lamb. He is the sacrifice that made all this possible. However, there is a plan and there is a way that God wants us to walk into. Amen. And the whole gospel has to be preached. When Jesus walked, Jesus said, I have said these things that you should not be offended. In the book of um, John chapter 14 and 15, when he talks about them suffering persecution and people killing them because they, go, because they think they're doing God's service. He said, I said this so you shouldn't be offended. The Lord is telling you the ramifications. The Lord is telling you the aftermath. The Lord is telling you everything that comes with the gospel. You believing um, what happens when you believe and things that you should avoid picking yourself up, things that you have to go through. Amen. You see, when you're not taught in the word, what's going to happen is you're going to receive the word with joy. You're going to hear the word. And a lot of people, they hear belief and blessings and miracles. But when tribulations and persecution arise, then they become offended because the scripture says, he hath no root in himself. The word has not take root because the word was not preached unto him. Mm -hmm. Is anybody preaching what to do in persecution? Is anybody preaching how to handle tribulation? You got, you got people now, and it's a trend. You got people now saying that you can, you can do self-defense. You can kill somebody with a gun. I say, you know, I mean, that's weird. I mean, I didn't, you know, that, that's not preaching inside the Bible. They said, but what, what do you do when somebody busts up in your house and hold a gun in your head? And you get a lot of preachers that say, I'm not perfect. You know, I'll probably shoot them back. Yeah, yeah, we get that. We get that. We're not perfect, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But what's the standard? What's the standard? Mm -hmm. You know, I tell brothers, I don't like to put my, I don't like to create a stipulation to um, entice a lack of faith. But if that's a stipulation you have to go by, the standard is I can't retaliate against a brother but have faith in God because that's what Hebrews said. In the book of Hebrews, Paul said, he said that I put my trust into the Lord to summarize and I should not fear what man shall do, into, do unto me. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abilago said, even if the Lord don't deliver me, he said, I would not be careful how I speak this unto you. In other words, I'm not going to walk on eggshells with you. I'm going to tell you. I'm not going to serve your God, and if you kill me, you're going to kill me. But we not going to bow down to no image. Amen. What is the standard or that you're preaching unto the people? Because the times will come, and the times are approaching. We're going to suffer persecution. We're going to suffer slander. And this is just more than slander because some of us are suffering this already. A lot of us are afraid to put on head coverings around family. Some of us are afraid of what people are going to say to us because of a calling that God has given unto us. A lot of us are trying to avoid how our dad may look unto us. A lot of us are going to try to avoid how our mom may look into us. A lot of us go through a different type of persecution. And what I mean by different, they're a worse type of persecution. They actually may get beat up by their dad. They dad may stop feeding them. They dad may kick them out the house. However, this is something that the Lord has prepared us for and want to prepare us for. Amen. Because when you suffer with Christ, you shall reign with him. Amen. The Lord will draw closer to you in pain. The Amen. Lord will draw closer to you when you inside that fire. Amen. This is the cost of being in the gospel. That's right. Because you got something greater than what you experience on this earth. I know a lot of people, they... They want to hear about, you know, serving God. And listen, guys, you, you're going to, you know, you're going to, you know, when you're inside the, you go, when you're inside the world, God going to bless you and deliver you. And John said, I hope as you may as prosper. I believe he said, um, summarizing. He said, I wish you may as prosper 
and be in good health. I believe the scriptures um, says in the um, book of um, one the third John, I believe. And however, he said, I wish you may is. Some of us may not prosper in the earth. Mm. Does that mean that we give up on God? Mm-hmm. Does that mean God is not worth it? Does that mean that we're going to look at God as unfair? Do you not know that the things of this earth is going to um, waste away? Amen. Do you not? Don't you believe that if you choose your mother and your father more than God, you're not good enough for God? Amen. The scripture says worthy. Worthy is to be good enough. When you say you're not worthy, it means you're not good enough. God will see you as not good enough. You're not good enough for the Lord. It's not unfair. The Lord is putting you to the mindset is that you're gaining something greater. You're gaining everlasting life. Our hope is that you're going to be in God's hand, perfected in him, living with him forever and ever with unspeakable joy. Amen. When you're in Saudi Arabia, when you're in some parts of Africa, when you're in some parts of Korea or China or Russia, and, they're, and the media try to hide and say, we this perfect religion country, I don't want to hear none of that. When you're in some parts of Mexico, even here in America, you're going to get persecuted for the word. Amen. They may not get that mansion. They may not get that job. They may not get that idol. However, it's a beautiful thing to die in the name of the Lord. So they prepare themselves day and night, fasting and praying. It's almost like, as Paul said, I'm jealous with a godly jealousy. (laughs) Because, you know, (laughs) they get killed and, you know, they waiting for the coming of God to rise first. It's over. Well done unto them. But we still got to go through this temptation. It's the word rooted in you. It's prayer rooted in you. God don't say these things just so just to be saying it. A lot of people got God twisted. A lot of people treat God how they treat their parents. A lot of people ain't raised right. It's very important that you honest with yourself. If you don't like to listen, you got to tell God you don't like to listen. God say these things so your soul can prosper. Amen. So you can be protected. Amen. Because if, if the word ain't rooted in you, you're going to fall during the persecution. Amen. That's very important. And so God comes to a man by his grace. Grace is his opportunity by his love that he asked for the people. Don't get that misconstrued. It's the opportunity he provides unto you. By his grace, it's his mercy. Mm-hmm. Obviously. So he comes in, and not obvious to some, I, I changed that word phrase, but for those that don't know, the riches, he talks about the riches of his grace. That All that comes in his grace is everything that comes with God. The Holy Ghost, the blessings, heaven, words of wisdom, everything. That all comes, that's the riches of God's grace. Amen. But God's grace, he comes unto you, he begins to teach you. He says, hey, listen, uh, repent, ye, be ye baptized in the name of Lord Jesus Christ, not Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Um, I know a lot of people like to quote, uh, and I like to break that down as of right now. Like I said, we're going to teach, going to itemize the scripture. I'm not just going to run. We're going for those that's listening. A lot of people may hear, and we got a sh- people with short attention spans. People like to debate. Um, people debate with their feelings. Um, they don't really know what they're talking about. They're not really taught in the word. Amen. Everybody treat the scriptures now like it's WrestleMania. <laughs> or some people treat the scriptures like it's some type of, I don't know, um, therapy session where people come together and just talk about um, their feelings, but they don't want to grow. They like Amen. to stay in their rut. Amen. So um, hold Matthew chapter 13 and go into Matthew chapter 27. And I believe it's um, verse, 47, verse 47. The one he said, um, ba- verse 28, excuse me, 28 and verse um, 19. <laughs> verse 19 first? Yes. Matthew, Go ye. Matthew chapter 28, Matthew chapter 27. Ma- excuse me, Matthew chapter 28 and verse 19. Matthew chapter 28 and verse 19. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Stop right there. Okay, what's the name of the Father? Jesus. What's the name of the Son? Everybody know that. Jesus. Jesus said, my Father will send the Holy Ghost whom he will send in my name. Amen. 
The name of the Holy Ghost is the Jesus Christ. Paul said in all things that we do, in word and in deed, do it in the name of Jesus Christ, who has a name above all names. And obviously go to Acts chapter 2, verse 38. This is Peter. Now keep this in mind. People say that Peter, theology say in the in the doctrine of the church and God in Christ, being that we grew up, being that we grew from that <laughs> and separated from that. They believe that Peter baptized wrong, or they believe that Peter required an act that wasn't a requirement. He made it a requirement. Keep this in mind. The Lord was with Peter. He told Peter to wait until you get a due of power on high. That's what he told Peter and the disciples, and they got together and they wait and prayed. Peter then was full of the Holy Ghost, so a person, they don't understand the power of the Holy Ghost. They think being spiritual is either magic or they think it's just an imagination. Amen. They think it's just words. It has no power. On the other hand, a lot of people think that the Holy Ghost is magic. A lot of people think that God, um, when God works, it has to be a feeling. That's why when people come here, they get to jumping and rolling on the ground. Listen, we're not going to go back and forth with you on being filled with the Holy Ghost unless we know it's unseemly. A lot of people think it's magic. A lot of people think they got to say, you know, fire. You know, they put their hands out. They jump, you know, my brother be telling me this type of stuff these preachers be doing. Um, they be huffing and puffing, and people think that the Spirit of God is magic. No, it's not. It's power. But when you, a lot of people say, I want a spiritual encounter. The spiritual encounter could be mercy of God. Because Jesus told um, the disciples, he said, they both have seen and hated the Father. Philip says, show me the Father. It's something that the Lord taught me yesterday. Philip says, show me the Father for it will suffice us. And then um, Jesus said, have I not been so long with you, Philip, that um, you have not, you have not known the father for I am in the father and the father is in me. And the Lord has revealed unto me and he has taught me is that when people think of sight, like as Philip has preached, a lot of people say, I want to see the father. They're thinking of a tangible body. Amen. They're thinking of a tangible body. Amen. And then I just thought, I was just in my bed, the Lord gave me the understanding, an ant sees with his antennas. Amen. A snake sees with his tongue. Amen. Paul said, I have it to where the eyes of your understanding increase. Amen. Jesus said, people say they see, but they really don't see. That means they understanding ain't open. That's right. See, we're limited unto our human body. So we yes. see because God created us to see with our eyes. Amen. The Lord classifies seeing him. The Lord classifies seeing him as when you see his power and his word. Amen. Do you not know is that when the power of God comes unto you, do you not know that when the word of God is manifest in the man or is manifest unto you, you have seen the father Amen. because you have seen his word manifest. A lot of people say, well, I, I want a spiritual encounter. The spiritual encounter for those that God had mercy unto at this present time is when he told you to repent. And he has filled you with the Holy Ghost. Amen. You may have seen a man of God or a true woman of God speak. The Holy Ghost is in them. Jesus said the Holy Ghost shall not speak of himself, but what shall he hear? Amen. That's the same thing that Jesus said. Amen. He said, I speak not of myself, but what my father said that I speak. Amen. But when Philip says, show me the father, he said, have I not been so long with you, Philip, that you have not known the father? Amen. So when a man is walking in God, when the word is presented, Amen. they see the Father. Amen. But people don't like what they see. Amen, that's right. So when the word is preached, you see the Father. That's when right. people say, I want a spiritual encounter, the Lord comes in and say, put down your cigarettes. Mm. The Father has manifested himself unto you. Amen. You have seen the Father. Amen. When the Lord has come in and said, listen, um, you need to take off the immodest clothing. You're causing men to lust. You have seen the Father. That's they right. said, but wait a second. That was my brother that has said that. No. The Lord may have used your brother. The Holy Ghost that may have been in your brother, he has it to speak. A man of God, don't you believe, is that we're the sons of God and that we're inside the Father and the Father is in us? That's right. So when you want to see God, you have to seek him after his word. You have to seek after him, after what he requires you to see him as. In other words, I want to open your understanding a little bit. Amen. You know, instead of people thinking that God is magic, 
They hold their hands up and they say, clouds break, sky break. God come down and, and the Lord have five and, and 30 wings and all that different type of stuff. They so focus on magic. You know what the devil do? The devil get these sorcerers and just as the book of Exodus, amen, hallelujah, <laughs> hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for the passion. Just as the book of Exodus, if you can find it for me, preacher, when the witches was trying, when the witches was mimicking the power of God. The witches was mimicking the power of God. And the Lord said, uh, Exodus chapter 4, verse 4. And the Lord said unto Moses, Put forth thy hand and take it by the tail. And he put forth his hand and caught it, and it became a rod in his hand. That they may believe that the Lord of God of their fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, has appeared unto thee. And the Lord said, Furthermore unto him, Put down that hand into that bosom. And he put his hand into his bosom, and when he took it out, his hand was leprous as snow. And he said, put down hand into that bosom again. And he put his hand into that bosom and plucked it out in the bosom. And it, it, turned, it turned again as a God of flesh. Go to the scripture where he talks about he threw his um, staff on the ground and turned to a serpent. And the mages threw their staff on the ground and it turned into a serpent. See, as you have here, um, people, they don't know what the power of God is. And they don't know how to see God because their understanding isn't open. So people are, you know, this is why God says, humble yourself and his ways are not your ways. The reason why I brought up the animal sight is because when God says sight, God sight, the reason why we define sight, we define sight based off of what it means to be a human. Mm -hmm. But God is not a human. Go ahead and read it for me, brother. Yeah, Exodus chapter 7, verse 8. What the scripture says. And the Lord spake unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying, When Pharaoh shall speak unto you, saying, Show a miracle for you, then thou shalt say unto Aaron, Take thy rod and cast it before Pharaoh, and it shall become a servant, a serpent. And Moses and Aaron went in unto Pharaoh, Amen. and they did so as the Lord has commanded. And Aaron cast down his rod before Pharaoh and before his servants, and it became a ser serpent. Then Pharaoh, Pharaoh also called the wise men and the sorcerers, now the magicians of Egypt. And they also did in like manner with their enhancements. Start right there. Enchantments. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Now keep this in mind, because people think that the power of God is magic or it has to be Houdini-like because America is a witchcraft nation. Amen. Their witchcraft is different from Africa. Africa, they know about witchcraft because they grew up in their culture. Amen. But America is under witchcraft, but America trains the people that it's not witchcraft. So you see witchcraft everywhere, but America conditions you that it's not witchcraft. Amen. Keep this in mind. People think that the spirit of God is magic. When they come over to the church, they expect to feel this magical feeling. So the devil has decided to mimic the power of God with sorcery and enchantment. Enchantment through music, enchantment through wisdom of words, clever speech, enchantment of, how would I say, a good feeling, mm -hmm. enchantments of smell, enchantments of body, um, uh, um, um, enchantments of your body, your body fluids, Amen. such as you got some witches that use their period bloods and they spit to do magic. Amen. You got some witches that use music. They use the music to climb into your mind and make you focus more on the music than the message. Amen. So you have enchantments and people think the power of God is through the enchantment. Amen. So when, um, when people say, I feel God, they automatically tie God into this feeling, and so we are conditioned unto that. And don't worry, I fell under that. The devil kept keep attacking me with a feeling. I keep searching for a feeling. But when God speaks, it don't have to be a feeling. It could just be a word, because a lot of people miss God. You're going to miss God if you're proud or arrogant. Go ahead and speak. Acts chapter 16, verse 16. What the scripture says. And it came to pass as they went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with a spirit of divination met us, which brought her master much gain by soothsaying. Then the same Paul, then the same followed Paul in us, and cried, saying, These are the servants of the Most High God. Stop right there. She was correct. Now keep this in mind. The devil's going to be right um, 
as God give him the allowance to be right. But as you notice, when the serpents cast, when the sorcerers cast the stab down, Aaron's serpent ate up the serpent. Aaron's rod, the serpent ate up the serpents of the sorcerer. So that means that God's power will outweigh and outmatch, obviously, the power of the devil. Many people will think that's prophecy. You get a lot of these so-called prophets out there on the internet. Amen. And they out there like, oh, you know, I got a prophetic gift. I can tell you what you think. And they may be right. <laughs> hey, listen, I'm not going to argue with you. Unless, you know, we can go into scripture. Unless, you know, you unseemly. But, you know, you got a lot of folks that's clever. Some people can't judge. That's why the Lord said, that's why Paul said, um, which the Lord spoke through Paul, wait until God reveals. Because, you know, some people may not know. But you always got to be in prayer. Amen. Because you got a lot of people that's going to do a lot of soothsaying. They're like, I feel in my spirit that you're lacking um, a type of um, love on the inside. Amen. And, you know, and, and have you have you ever got your heart broken? And they're like, how would I say? They're wise. Amen. They understand the fluctuations of a man's emotion. Amen. You know, a, a pimp or a playboy or a therapist um, or a good speaker, a person that's able to climb into your mind, understands by your words, your tone, by the way you are raised, by who raised you, by your environment, by what music you listen to. They understand what to say and what to bring out of you. They understand what you like about your desires. You can find out what a man's desires is, but what he says for what the, which, um, which your treasures, um, where your treasure is, where your heart is. Mm -hmm. So basically what your desire is based on who you are and what you lack. So they understand how to speak. They say a prophecy unto you, and then they get you to speak a desire, and then they make up another prophecy, and you will think that that is God. Amen. You know, so basically, not to go deep into this, because this is a different word. I want to go back into persecution. Mm -hmm. I was basically trying to tell you is that when you're not rooted in God, when you're not in the Lord, when the word has no effect up in you, when the word is not growing up in you, you're lost. You don't know what you may do. Mm -hmm. You want stable. The scripture says, cleanse your heart, you double-minded. If your heart's not clean, you double-minded. You want stable in all your ways. You are subjected to be beguiled by the devil. Amen. You know, a lot of once saved, always say people like to quote this scripture when the, when, when the Lord said, when who's in my father's hands, no man may pluck anyone that's in, my, that's in God's hands or in my father's hands. But the Lord gives you the choice to walk out of his hand. Amen. Amen. The Lord gives you the choice. That's why the Lord said repent and go back and do your first work. That means walk back in that hand. Why it is they? Why the mercy is still there? But see, when the word has no root up in you, go ahead and read the scripture. John chapter 15, verse 18. The scripture says, If the world hates you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love its own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hated you. Remember the word that I said unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. But all these things will they do unto you for my name's sake, because they know not him that sent me. All righty, start right there. And um, to clear up that form of that, that scripture about baptism, I don't want to leave nobody hanging. Um, you know, like he said, the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, which is the name of Jesus Christ, the one that died for our sins. Amen. Acts 2.38, as I was saying, people like to say um, Peter did it wrong. Peter didn't do it wrong. That's right. Because the Holy Ghost was with Peter. Amen. Peter did miracles on the day of Pentecost. Amen. So you telling me Peter did it wrong and God backed him? Amen. You telling me Peter did it wrong and he didn't know doctrine? But he was taught by God. He was witnesses. The Lord tell him when that day happens, you'll be ready. Amen. And Acts 2.38, he, um, he said, be baptized in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Um, and, and Paul, and you don't have to go to that scripture. But you know what? Actually, you want Acts 2.38? Go ahead and read it so, we can, so people can hear it. Then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. Start right there. So that's the name. The name is the name Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost is a title. A lot of people say God's name is Jehovah. Jehovah is a title. A lot of people say Elohim. Elohim is a title. What's his name? Jesus. Jesus. What's his name? Jesus. The scripture says um, he came back and he had a name written on his thigh that no man knew by himself. 
Amen. What's his name? Jesus. No man don't know his name. Who could say Jesus is Lord by, by the Holy Ghost? That's right. The Lord began to teach you his name. His Amen. name is named Jesus Christ. Amen. It ain't no secret. Amen. Yeah, a lot of these brothers, they think they deep. They play Sherlock Holmes with the Bible. They get their magnifying glass and then they treat the Bible like it's algebra. Amen. They add up scriptures together and then and then it equals a it equals a number and then they just tie it into the Bible. Amen. And then they say that that means that the Lord's name is actually this, this, that, and that. <laughs> a lot of people think they're more special because they say Yeheshua Yamashiach. Amen. Yeah. Oh my, just how foolish. Amen. You know, just how foolish. Amen. You know, a Mexican brother don't know how to say um, Yeshua Yamashiach. But God had grace to him, and he said Jesus is Spanish. Amen. God had grace to us, and we got the Holy Ghost, and we say Jesus in America, in Amen. English, excuse me. A Japanese man say Jesus in Japan. What the scripture says? The Bible says in the book of Acts chapter 4, verse 12. Amen. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is not other name under the heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. Now, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, they perceived that they were unlearned Stop and right, ignorant. Stop right there. That's what they're telling us. They perceive that we unlearn because we blunt and we stick stick to the scriptures. Amen. However, let's go back to the point. What I'm trying to make, make is when you when God tells you to do his plan, when he tells you to operate um, in the way he wants you to operate, as I said, baptism. I had to clear up baptism with some of you all. Amen. You know, I wanted to stay to that point. But it's, it's needful for you guys that I kind of deviated a bit. Um, you know, I wanted to back it up with scripture so we can get a clear understanding. It's because God is a creator. When you come over to God, you can't understand God's works, understand how God do things. So people try to interpret the Bible based on the English American school system, based on the Japan school system or the world school system. You think sight is by your eyes. No sight can be by your mind. Amen. An ant sees what is its in them. Amen. A snake sees what is tongue. Amen. There's different sight given to different animals. Some animals have more than one eye. Mm -hmm. And some animals' eyes move differently, and wherever the case may be. Mm -hmm. Some animals go by senses. Amen. So God has, God created different forms of sight. So you have to ask God what type of sight is he talking about? Amen. When he said they have seen the Father, that don't mean you've seen some type of, you know, figure, whatever the case may be. They're like, i seen the Lord. He was black. No, 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 no. But <laughs> when you hear the word and the word is present unto you, you have seen the Father. Amen. When a man operates in God and the Holy Ghost is in him, the Father is in you. When you continue in the doctrine. Yes. Amen. Now, if the Lord manifests himself into a bodily shape, amen, amen. The Holy Ghost, the scripture says he descended in a bodily shape as a dove. Amen. Does that mean the Holy Ghost is a dove? You get these brothers that draw the Holy Ghost and they say he is a um he is a dove. No, that's your human understanding. The Lord, people, the Lord don't need a bodily shape to be present. Men are tangible. Amen. Spirits are. Um, what I mean by tangible, yes, that's what I mean. You you have to touch a human to be felt. Amen. The devil, you don't need, the devil can be present. You don't need to touch him because he's a spirit. Same thing with angels. They're like, if you see an angel, you're going to get scared. I don't know how the Lord may make an angel appear unto me. You just never know. The angel may appear to you as a man, a man with wings, or however the case may be. Now, there's some descriptions of how an angel may look. The, uh, 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 the Holy Spirit descended in the bodily shape of a dove. Does that mean he's a dove? Does that mean he's sitting as a dove on the pulpit? No. That tells you is to see God is to hear his word, is to believe in his word and walk in his word. Amen. You walk in the sight of God because he said, God, look on me and see me. Amen. That means that when you're walking in God, the Lord see you because you in him. He sees himself in you because he is in you. I just want to open up your understanding with the sight, you know, something that the Lord kind of taught me. Because a lot of people want a spiritual encounter, and these so-called preachers and so-called pastors and so-called prophets and miracle workers, um, they, they try to manifest magic and sight, and they play off your senses. Mm -hmm. But back to the point. When God said get baptized in the name of Lord Jesus Christ like Peter and Paul did inside the Scriptures, like every disciple did inside the Scriptures, 
When Paul say, when God say get baptized, that means get baptized. Tarry not. So why do you tarry? Tarry not. Um, and when the Lord say pray, that means pray. That's right. A lot of people say, well, we all fall short of the glory of God. Let me break down this scripture for you. That means nobody perfect. A lot of people believe that they perfect. In, in other words, they was born in Israel. Some people was born in a religious family. Mm -hmm. And they were like, man, I, I've been blessed with the perfect teaching. out, um, um, Archbishop, supreme bishop, apostle, um, 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 teacher, grand teacher. He's my teacher. And he's been teaching me. And I never sinned from my birth. Nah, brother, you sinned already. Amen. You sinned because you thought you was perfect. Amen. Listen, the Lord made it to where we're going to sin because the Lord want us to be in him. A lot of people say, well, does that mean that the Lord tempts you in sin? No. What I mean by the Lord made it to where you're going to sin, he made you a flesh and blood. Amen. That's what that means. Because you're in flesh and blood, you're bound by the spirit. You're bound by the law of sin. Amen. Amen. As the scripture talks about in Romans chapter 7 and 8, he said, there's a law warning my members against the law of my mind. That's the law of sin and death. That means that law is going to overcome me and that law is going to bring me into sin. Amen. And, you know, that's me expounding a little bit. But like I said, I don't want to deviate. When the Lord tells you to pray, that means you need to pray. Amen. When the Lord tells you you need to fast for the Holy Ghost, you need to pray for the Holy Ghost. That means you need to fast and pray for the Holy Ghost. Amen. However, now keep this in mind as we go back into Matthew chapter 13, verse 21. You may get the Holy Ghost. You may speak in tongues. You may, um, you may heal. You may pray. A lot of people got stories they prayed and somebody came back to life. But if you don't continue steadfastly in the doctrine, that word is not going to take root in you. Amen. That's true. Amen. Peter cut off somebody's ear. A lot of people are going to say, you know, Peter cut off somebody's ear, but he walked with Jesus. Mm -hmm. He was healing. The Lord mm -hmm. told him to go out and heal. He abandoned everything. Mm -hmm. You got a lot of people that sacrifice for God. That's they right. don't preach the whole doctrine. It's a waste. It's because there's a lot of suffering that you got to do for God. That's right. what, what kind of mindset would it be? Go ahead. John chapter 20, verse 22. What the scripture says. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Amen. So Jesus told them to receive the Holy Ghost. In other words, he wants you to receive it. You got a lot of people that got the Holy Ghost. You got Peter who walked with Jesus. You got people that have sacrificed a lot of things. But they have not done everything that the Lord told them to do. They got lazy. Amen. They got offended. Uh, they said the word was too harsh. They gave over the money. Mm -hmm. um, they, um, how would I say, they sold their soul over to the devil. Um, they wasn't honest with themselves. They got prideful. They got arrogant. Even Hezekiah, he got his heart lifted up with pride. We may have our days, but we got to be sure to remain humble, and we got to be sure to begin in prayer. That's right. But back to the persecution. The reason why I say that is because when you operate in getting baptized, when you get the Holy Ghost and when you pray, when you do everything that God say, and it isn't just belief and even just the Holy Ghost prayer and all that, which is essential because the scripture says we have access to the Father by his spirit. So if you're not seeking out the Holy Ghost and you don't want it, then you're not going to have access to the Father. I'm just being honest with you. Amen. Because you told God you denied the faith. Because your faith is in the Holy Ghost. He's the comforter. Amen. In other words, the, why he's called comforter? He's called comforter because he's to comfort you until Jesus come back and redeem us and give us a glorified body. Amen. So as we hear inside the scriptures, you got people that's inside the church. They say, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. They call them, um, how would they say? They walk, they talk the talk, but they don't walk the walk. That's what they say <laughs> to make it plain. Mm -hmm. You know, they fake, they soft, as people say it. Or he ain't about that business. He ain't about it. Amen. They say, if you about it, be about it. You mm -hmm. know, you're talking in the streets or whatnot. He's like, yeah, he, that brother ain't about it. <laughs> that brother ain't real. He's just talking. You know what I'm saying? He's just talking. Or, right. or they pick on weak people that can't fight back. Mm -hmm. However, you know, when somebody comes in and they say, hey, brother, you know, you corny for following that Bible. Everything you're saying don't make sense. How would you react to that? And know yourself. Because it's by God that you get better. Amen. When somebody, when you got a friend or when you got a father and he like, man, if somebody preached to me Jesus again, I'm going to hit him in the jaw and kick him out the house. How do you feel about that? When somebody come in, when your mother come in and say, 
it's between me or God. Because ever since you've been walking with God, you've been wearing head coverings. I told you to buy me secrets and you said, mother, I can get you things that doesn't go against my God. And your mother said, well, you know what? If you're going to serve God, you're going to have to sleep in the street. How would you feel about that? Before we get into that deep thing, let's get into the small things. Because people complain over, over little things. Mm -hmm. Over absolutely little things. Oh, God, they looking at me funny. Lord, I don't want to wear a head covering. A lot of women, they like getting their hair done. And they know they're going to have to wear a head covering. Amen. They get they get these hairstyles and they don't want to wear a head cover, so they get lazy. They put like um a a, a, a little um little tiny napkin on the top of their head, <laughs> like a sprinkle, like 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 a cherry on top of a cake or something. <laughs> you can't have through God. Amen. You know my brother was preaching this. My, um, you know the pastor. He said, when you ask God for a blessing, you ask God for a car, and God give it to you. Is God gonna give you a car with just the engine? And the skeleton of the car? Amen. But you want to have through God to put a bottle cap on your head. They just got a bottle cap on their head. When the Lord say cover your head, that means cover your head. Amen. You give God 100%, he's going to give you 100% because that shows That's that you right. care. That's right. That shows that you mean business with God. However, when somebody comes to you and they say, hey, bro, you, you, you soft. It's because we come from a family that we believe in fighting. Everybody, you inside, you know, you born from the hood or not everybody, and not everybody, everybody tough now. They just tough in their own environment. So it's not just a hood thing no more. Amen. You know, Asians got their toughness, white folks got their toughness, black folks got their, whatever the case may be. You get around your folks and everybody, um, they like, bro, he say something to me, I'm going to hit him in the jaw. And then, you know, they ask you, what you going to do? And, you know, you kind of like, you trying to avoid it. I don't want to, I don't want to talk about it right now. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you laugh and you, you can't entertain the conversation. Oh, man. You know, you want to walk away from them, but somebody get the yelling and you just walk away. They're like, you ain't going to say nothing. Mm. How would you feel about that? Amen. Are you going to actually walk away and say, no, nah, forget about it. You know, I'm not going to, you know, I'm going to turn it. I'm going to turn the other cheek. You know, my Lord don't want me to retaliate. You know, my Lord don't want me to um, do any of this because I'm following the gospel. Amen. You know, and, and you're afraid how they're going to respond. So, so you saying you weak? So you saying you soft? Hmm. How would you feel um, in terms of forgiveness? Amen. Your mother may slander you and call you names. Amen. She may threaten, she may put her hands on you or threaten to put her hands on you. How would you feel about that? You get a lot of people, um, you know, they're like, oh, man, you know, you can't curse no more. Uh, you know, you can't say dirty jokes no more. So you're in a relationship and she like, I don't like this new you. You're too soft. I want you to, I want you to, you know, you know, be, be more harsh. You know, whatever the case may be. You know, you're like, no, I'm following my Lord. I don't do that no more. Well, well, can we go drink? No, I don't do that either. Mm -hmm. Amen. Oh, well, some dude was looking at me funny. Can you tell him to stop? No, I don't, I don't do that. Just put on, put on something so you don't entice on um, some type of attention to yourself. Amen. You know, my, my Lord told me to make peace with all men, Amen. if possible. <laughs> Be peace to all, man. So, you know, just kind of stay out of trouble. Hide yourself. Amen. Scripture says the prudent sees um, evil and hideth himself, and the fool rages and is confident. So he gets angry. He confident. He can do anything. So, however, how would you feel when they insult you and say, hey, listen, you too holier than thou. You know, um, you come with a movie, you know, they watching Medea, they watching the Transformers. They say, what's wrong with the Transformers? It's witchcraft. They said, what's wrong with Spider-Man? It's witchcraft. It's magic. It's witchcraft. Uh, what's wrong with anime? It's witchcraft. Amen. And I, you know, it's witchcraft. Is there an anime that's pure? You know, um, I don't, I, you know, any anime that promotes sin, you shouldn't watch. Amen. That's, that's one thing I would say. Any anime that promotes sin, you should not watch. But most anime out this, and, and then when I say anime, I'm talking about Dragon Ball Z and Naruto. So it's witchcraft. Mm -hmm. So you get around your homeboys, so-called homeboys, and the Lord told you to get away from them. Mm -hmm. But you don't want to let go. You believe you can save them. Mm -hmm. So the Lord is going to open up your understanding. He's going to have mercy on you. He's going to teach you why you don't mix. And then he's going to prove your heart. He's going to, pretty soon you have to make a choice. You're going to be sitting down and, you know, they're like, you don't watch Naruto? I don't. I don't watch witchcraft. It's going to taint my spirit. I don't watch Transform. I don't watch Medea. I don't watch a woman um, dressing up as... I don't watch a man dressing up as a woman. Mm -hmm. The Lord told me not to do that. Um, the Lord told me not to watch cursing and fighting. Anything that promotes sin, the Lord told me not to do that. They go look at you and be like, you holding it now. Mm -hmm. So you think you better than us? You corny now? Mm 
Mm-hmm. You an extremist. Mm. You need to go to Lakeside. You get an injury. They say, go to the doctor, take medication. And I said, no, I'm going to have faith in God. Boy, you crazy. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Man. See, a lot of people say he had faith in God. Nothing happened to him. But see, when you believe in this true God, see, that's the problem. People destroyed the reputation of God in America. It's so that's much right. false gospel going on mm-hmm. is that when they pray to the Lord, the Lord may have mercy on them, and then the Lord does some other things. However, the Lord may not respond to some of them, and they get mad at God. No, examine yourself. Amen. But see, when you're in this doctrine, you endure persecution, now I can have faith in God heal me. Amen. Now I can get sick. Now I may get diabetes. Now I may get cancer. And I have faith in God and say, you know what? I'm not going to go to chemotherapy. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to go and take insulin. Amen. I'm going to actually say I'm going to fast and pray and have faith in the Lord. That's right. I mean, the disciples did it. Mm-hmm. I mean, was there a woman at the issue of blood? She couldn't get healed. She did it. Mm-hmm. Why can't I do it? Amen. You go to some of these religious folks that they like the Lord give you it. Listen, look, they don't believe in God. That's why they're going to fall during the persecution. Mm-hmm. And they're going to try to kill you because they think they do a God service. Amen. They like the Lord going to bless you. <laughs> the Lord going to heal you. <laughs> the Lord going to set you free. <laughs> the Lord going to do this. <laughs> and then you get a woman. It's like Showtime Gospel, Hollywood. Amen. They play the organ. They get the rolling on the ground. Amen. But then somebody actually get canceled and they say, God going to heal me. They say, girl, you crazy. Go to the doctor. Sure. Get chemo. And if chemo don't heal you, you's going to die anyway. I pray that the Lord going to let you in. Now, these brothers didn't have the word in them. Amen. They didn't believe in the word. Amen. It wasn't taught to them. They can't see it. And if they had seen it, they hated it. Amen. So, you know, if you can't deal with that persecution, how are you going to deal with somebody yank you out the house? Amen. And say, do you believe in Jesus? Mm-hmm. You're going to take out your gun? You're going to kill him? You're going to take out your AR? <laughs> you going to take out your AK? Amen. Your switches? Amen. <laughs> they had the, uh, you know what it is, what they had the thing to make their gun a machine gun now. Yeah, switch. Yeah, the switch. Yeah, the switch. You going to take out your nine? Yeah. Your Glock? Your Glizzy? I mean, they call it now. <laughs> your protector, your right hand man. The Draco. That Draco. <laughs> That executor. Amen. To send a brother to another land who messing with me. Amen. You going to take that out? The disciples didn't do that. Peter did. The Lord said, you kill with the sword, you die by the sword. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You kill by the sword, you die by the sword. Amen. A lot of people say, does that mean I'm going to die by the sword of man? No. You got some folks that may have killed somebody and they may have died a peaceful death. Amen. They died by the sword of God. A lot of people say, huh, the sword of God? The scripture says, out of the Lord's mouth is a sword. Yes. Give me Revelation chapter 1 and 8. Go ahead and read for me, Brother Rashad. And tarry not. Revelation chapter 1 and 8. We see that the scripture I'm looking for. And it says. What the Bible say? You, oh, you quick. I mean, it's for you, brother. Revelation 1 and 8. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, said the Lord. Excuse me. Um, it, go to verse 16. Verse 16. Revelation chapter 1, verse 16, and it says, And he had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword. Stop right there. Amen. That's what's going to kill you. Amen. That is going to kill you. You kill by the sword, you're going to die by the mouth of God. Amen. Hallelujah. The Lord going to judge you and send you to hell. Because he said no murderer will have any inheritance. And excuse me, no all murders will have their part in the lake of fire. Amen. And no murder gonna have inheritance in his kingdom. Excuse me. Excuse me. But all murders will have their part in the lake of fire. That's what the Lord said. Amen. It's in his word. But see, are you gonna kill a brother? Or somebody hit you in the jar, you're gonna get up and like strike them back? Are you going to be like Peter? Are you going to fall through the temptation? The Lord told him to pray, and he didn't pray because the word wasn't rooted in him. He followed God. And listen, God is so merciful and graceful. He'll give you a spiritual gift to encourage you. But you have to work in that gift. That's why he says that bear fruit, that he may prune you so you can bear more fruit. Pruning is um, watering a plant and also taking off the bad branches 
that prevents the plant from growing. Amen. So you're going to bear fruit and the Lord's going to come to you and say, hey, listen, do this more and stop doing this. And you're going to do it better. Amen. So Peter wasn't all the way pruned. The word wasn't in him yet because mm -hmm. it wasn't time for that yet. But the Lord did warn him and tell him to pray. Amen. And he didn't pray and he fell into temptation. He didn't know how to handle himself. So when the Lord tells you to do these things, the Lord wants the word to take root up in you. So a lot of people may say, how can the word take root up in me? Give me the book of um, Ephesians for me, brother. Give me the book of Ephesians chapter 3, verse 17. We're going to teach today. I know a lot of people want to hear the Lord says, and don't fall asleep on me, people. <laughs> 317. This word can save your soul. Listen to the Holy Ghost speak what the scripture said. 317 Ephesians. That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye being rooted and grounded in love. Stop right there. Amen. 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 Maybe meant for you, brother. <laughs> Maybe meant for you, brother. Amen. It said Christ may. Christ may. 17. Dwell in your hearts by faith that ye be rooted and grounded in love. Excuse me, start right there. Now he says faith. Yes. As we know, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. As we know, faith without works is dead. That's right. Um, the once saved, always saved brothers or eternal security, whatever they call themselves. Mm -hmm. um, they, um, in the book of James, and, and James made it so plain, but that Bible don't exist, that, 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 that book don't exist to them. He said, many will say, uh, show me thy faith without thy works. And then James says, but I will show you my faith by my works. So he goes on to say that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, not just a belief, mm -hmm. but by accepting and agreeing with the Lord to say, I'm going to walk up in it. Mm -hmm. Because we can't fully walk in God on our own power. Amen. We need God to clean us up and prune us. That's We're right. going to stumble. When he says a righteous man stumble, he said a righteous man falling. That means he tries to be righteous and he falls. Right. That don't mean you don't try it and they quote three, three, um, Romans 3 and verse 13 and say we all fall short. No, that means you try to walk with God and you do what he tell you to do. Amen. When the Lord says a wise man, hear us my word and do it therefore when the floods come and he his foundations upon a rock, when the floods come and beat upon the house, it shall stand. Amen. What does that mean? That means you are protected when you are obedient. A lot of people, they don't do everything that God say do because they disagree with it and their feelings get hurt and then they fall back into sin and then they try to avoid the topic. You can get them every time because the Bible ain't wrong. You, you could quote, you could say, I've been walking with God 30 years. It don't matter. Amen. See, God will teach you and people get to crying. They get to rolling. They get to backflip and they may do some magic. They may act like raiding off motor combat. <laughs> they may shoot lightning out their fingertips. They may say, you know what, brother? I've been, I've been under bishop. Um, senior evangelist this and I've been walking with God and I fell back into sin. God abandoned me. Brother, did you do everything that God say do, brother? Amen. Did you do everything that God say do, brother? I got to question your doctrine. Was your patient on the Lord? Because God is faithful. You know what faithful means? It's like a faithful wife. He never going to leave. That's right. Amen. When, when someone is faithful, they stick by you to the end like a dog. He's more faithful than a dog. A dog stick by you to the end. You know, there's certain dogs that if the house was on fire, and a man can't get out the house, the dog will curl up by you and die with you. That's how faithful a dog is. God gave traits to animals that resemble him. God gave traits to animals that, you know, resemble the fierceness of him. However, those traits can be used to the devil's will. Those traits can be used to this animal's own will that God gives it, and the traits can be used to God's will. But God gave his creation a lot of his traits and his power up in it. So think of a faithfulness of a dog and a faithfulness of a wife and a husband. Amen. God's faithfulness is that if you do what he say he's going, if you do what he say he's going to do, he is going to retaliate by give you his promises. Though it tarry, Amen. it should not sleep. Is that what the scripture says? It would do all that it has sought out to do. So though the word may tarry, and it may tarry for some years. It may tarry for some years. Don't worry. That's, that's, in, that's in another scripture. Yeah. It may tarry for some years. But God is faithful who shall do exceedingly above all, all that we ask to think. Amen. And that's in the book of Ephesians, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> <Right there. laughs> Amen. 
you know, I'm just joking with the reader, you know, because, you know, when I'll be reading, you got to catch the scriptures like that. Woo! You know, y'all be hearing me mess up. A lot of brothers may hear me be like, man, I'm sick of him messing up. It's harder than you think. But point being is this. God is faithful Amen. if you do everything that he say do. So if there's a mess up um, on your walk with God, then that's your fault. That's not God's fault. That's right. I'm a believer in that. And it's nothing nobody can say to tell me any different. Either you was taught wrong, you walked wrong, you wasn't patient on God, you was prideful, you, or you heard some things that you didn't want to do. And God would give you that understanding. You just walk it down. You talk, you talk, you talk, you walk it down. You have that passionate heart to heart. Maybe some apologizing. I may hug it out. Amen. But trust me, the brother willing to hear, he going to hear where he failed at. Amen. And if he's humble in his heart, he going to bust into tears. And he got to hear that word. And he got to go back into that word if he want to grow in it. That Amen. brother or sister. If he's not willing to hear it, then he's not going to grow. He's going to walk and if God and then until his time for his until his time on this earth is up. Amen. I'm a true believer in that. So basically what I'm trying to say, when God up when when you want the Lord to walk in you by faith, mm -hmm. faith is believing and surrendering unto him, as I said. Amen. Now you're not going to do all of his word. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to stick in him. He gives you that power. Amen. As I told you. If you don't do all that God say do, you're going to fall short and God is going to warn you. A lot of people be like, and I was like this and I still struggle with this at times. And I know it's that magic. It's that feeling thing. Is this God? Is this God? Is this God? God don't try to get your attention. Amen. God gets your attention. Amen. God will let you know that it's me. Mm -hmm. If God don't let you know, it's for a time because in that time, he's going to let you know. That's right. The Lord sees you seeking him. He sees the sincerity in your heart. When you're seeking God, he's going to have mercy upon you. That's right. He knows you're going to fall. He's going to have mercy upon you. However, you have to strive to walk with him. Amen. That's very important. So a lot of you people don't get paranoid or, you know, y'all may hear the hard gospel and feel bad about it, wherever the case may be, or, you know, the devil coming to you and put a spirit of guilt on you, a spirit of condemnation and say that you're going to hell and, you always guilty. Listen, if you're striving to do all that God say do, he's going to have mercy on you. Amen. And he's going to tell you what you need to work on. And if you pray and say, Lord, don't come out there and say, I'm going to do it. No, Lord, listen, I'm going to be honest with you, God. I'm a liar, Lord. I keep looking at this woman with lust, Lord. I'm a playboy, Lord. You come in there and you get you, you got tears in your eyes and you honest with God. And Lord going to come to you and tell you what you need to do. Lord going to come to you and tell you um, how you may need to act. The Lord, and however, when God tells you how to avoid certain things, you got to do it. You got to do it and take comfort in God. See, a lot of people fall is because they don't want to give up their friends. You can take that phone call. Brother. A lot of people fall is because they, they, they don't want to give up their friends. A lot of people fall is because they don't want to stop talking to their mama. They don't want to stop talking to their daddy. They say, I got to stop talking to them. No, you can't fellowship with them. In other words, when they want to go and do sinful acts, when they go in and want to talk sinful, you got to get away from that. You can go in and visit them and say, how you doing? You got to honor your parents. However, you know, when they want you to do sinful acts, you're like, mama, listen, I can't do all that. You know, mama, daddy, listen, I got to do all that. But see, a lot of people, they don't want to give up that. They don't want to give up that video game, that demonic video game. And then they're going to try to repent and do that same cycle and then, a spirit of sorrow would jump up in them. They always going to feel like they're not good enough. You know, a spirit of sorrow would jump up in you is because you don't want to let go of certain things. So you're going to try to pity your way into heaven. You're going to you're going to try to cry in and be like, Lord, I'm that same sinner. I'm that same nobody. And the Lord is going to look at you and be like, how long are you just going to cry? When are you going to give up what I tell you to give up? When are you going to let go when I tell you to let go? And then if you can't do it, you need to fast and pray for strength to do it. What's going to happen is when you begin to do all that God say do, when that flood comes, which is the devil, and he begins to tempt you, you're going to stand. When the devil begins to tempt you, you're going to be able to withstand. You're going to have a stable mind. Even when you wander and waver, God is going to bring you back. Amen. But when you don't want to give up this and you don't want to give up that because people want to do things their way. People want to get right with their way. People Amen. want to get right on their terms. Amen. You know, they, they can do certain things because certain things in the Bible may be easier to some than others. Giving up certain things may be easier to some than others. But you got certain women that want to go and teach. You got certain women that want to go in and be a pastor. So they go in and start hosting Bible study and be like, you limiting me. I want to go higher and 
and, and I want to go in and reach my calling and whatever the case may be. Well, your calling is according to the word. Amen. You know, if Jesus was in your heart by faith, then you'll have faith in what this word is because you, your faith is only by the word of God. Your faith comes by hearing the word of God so you can see the Father. Amen. When you have faith in God and you are in God, then you see the Father. Amen. You see the Father working in your life. So a person may say, you saw the father, what did he look like? Well, no, I, I didn't I didn't see the tangible. I, I I mean, I didn't see the visual. I didn't see the shape. But I saw that when I prayed, he gave it to me. Amen. I saw that I had an addiction of drinking and he took it away. The Lord told me that I need to stop hanging with my homeboys I knew since kindergarten because they enticed me to drink and the spirit of drunkenness is on them. Amen. And I and I cried and I prayed and I got away from them and the Lord took my addiction away. Amen. And the Lord gave me blessings. He gave me a spiritual gift. He gave me a beautiful family. Amen. See, the Lord going to take care of you. Amen. The Lord going to give you joy. That's right. You're just going to have to give it up. Amen. Hallelujah. The word going to have to be in root in you. That's I'm right. in root. I'm in that word root. The key word root. Follow me now. That's right. Follow me now. Yes, I'm in I'm in root. What I mean by root, I'm in that root word. That's right. Any plant that my heavenly father has not rooted would be plucked out. You got a different type of root. People will root they step into things. Mm. See, when you get into an overzealous mindset, you're going to root yourself into certain things. Amen. When you're not taught right, you're going to root yourself into things. The devil going to root. Isn't that written by a parable that the devil sold weeds? Mm -hmm. And in the in the in the farmer, he said, "Where all these tares come from?" And um and and the dude said, "Let them both grow up." And he said, "When harvest time come, gather the wheat into my garner and throw the tares into the um into the uh, fire." So you got roots that the devil plant. But see, when the devil, when you when you don't listen to God, the devil will enter into your heart and root you into something you have no business being into. Amen. So you get a lot of brothers that um. You get a lot of brothers that, um, you know, they say that, well, you know, how I know if I'm rooted by the devil? I didn't sell my soul. I read and I pray, but you're not doing everything that God tell you to do. You're not rooted in the Lord. Amen. You, you didn't give up your friend, your friend that likes to talk about naked women all day. Every time you get about him, you sneak in that naked woman. He go on Instagram, you look on his Instagram, next thing you know, you got Instagram again. Amen. You didn't give up that smoking, um, um, talking crazy um, homegirl that you knew since high school Amen. that talks about all she do is sleep with men. Mm -hmm. You're not. The next thing you know, the Lord warns you, and the devil enters to your heart, and he roots you in adultery. He um, he roots you in fornication. He roots you in lust. He roots you with a strange woman. You are gonna think that that strange woman is from God? Amen. It's because you didn't give up all that God tells you to give up. You allow yourself to be deceived. You're going to be praying and you never get it mm -hmm. because you didn't give up all that God tell you to give up That's right. because you didn't have faith. Amen. A lot of people say that it's heresy. <laughs> you trust it in your own works. Brother, you can't have faith without works. Amen. I'm going to say it again. You can't have faith without works. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm going to say it one more time. You can't have faith without works. Amen. Because James said, by works is my faith made perfect. That faith work with works. He said, but wait, what about Ephesians 2 and 8? Read that for me and hold that scripture on 3. All right. And go to Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8. 2 verse 8. For by grace are, saved, are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Stop right there. Of yourselves. Keep going. Not of works, lest any man should be should boast. Stop right there. Amen. Now, hallelujah. A lot of people think that the Bible contradict. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, let me read this scripture. James chapter 2, verse 18. Yeah, man may say thou hast faith and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. That don't mean the devil got eternal life. Jesus said the prince of this world is already judged. Amen. It says that, but with thy no obey, man, that faith without works is dead. Jesus said, the works that I do, you shall do greater works. Amen. The works that I do, you shall do greater works. Does that mean miracles? That'll only mean miracles 
That means works of prayer, works of obedience, works of giving. There's a work you require to do. Amen. You believe, I believe it's Matthew chapter 25. You don't have to go there, brother. Amen. He gave this brother a talent, he didn't use it. And there's a scripture that said, work out your own soul in salvation with fear and trembling. The Lord called that servant a wicked, a slothful and wicked servant. There was one guy that knew to do the Lord's will and he ate and drunk with the uh, drunken. And he got beaten with many stripes. So what is this works that Paul talking about and the works that James talking about? You got these people that ain't taught by God. Amen. They get up and they run. The word is not rooted in them. <laughs> they, they get up and they say James and Paul had a contradiction. They think the apostles was wrong. Amen. Jesus said, y'all witnesses of me. When they hear you, they hear me. That's what Jesus said. Because the Holy Ghost is in them. They speak and they was taught by God. He said, y'all witnesses. John, um, John, the brother of James that said faith for our works is dead said, we are of God. And he that hears us is of God. Amen. That's what James said. You got to hear us. The scripture says in Acts that they, they wrote, the, the Lord had to wrote epistles that the church had to follow to be established. Amen. James was an epistle that the Holy Ghost told them to write and the people had to listen to be established. Amen. But you got the people that said, well, you know, they just chose. They said, well, you know, um, Paul, um, Paul said belief, you know, um, without works. And James said belief will work. So we believe that James was wrong or something. No. When the Bible says one thing and then say another thing, mm -hmm. you got to preach it and make the Bible harmonize. Amen. It's the context of it. That's right. See, listen, the Bible has to be revealed unto you. This is why I said before, the eyes of your understanding has to be open. People think they can be taught by the word just like they go to science class. No, God has to teach you. That's why you call Peter unlearned. It's because they didn't go to school. They didn't have the smart education, but the mother folks that did have a smart education and walked with Jesus like Peter. The works that Paul was talking about was your own works. That's right. You go by and say that, you know what? I'm going to choose what scripture I'm going to follow. Mm -hmm. I'm going to follow the law. I'm going to stop sinning on my own. I believe that I can stop smoking. Mm -hmm. I may even put stuff up. But this brother didn't pray to ask God to stop smoking. Because had he prayed, God would have told him, hey, get baptized, get the Holy Ghost. I'm going to work with you and you're smoking. Amen. When you say do the works of Jesus, then you got to pray. Amen. You got to get baptized. Amen. You got to get the Holy Ghost. Amen. You got to stand steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. Amen. When you talk about your own works, you got to go to church. <laughs> you got to tie to your crooked reverend. You got to tie to your false pastor. Uh -huh. You got to play the organ while the preacher is preaching. Uh -huh. You got these musicians that they so bold, you know, because the pastor ain't teaching right. So the musicians got so much powers that they believe that they the key to a good church service, Man. like the church of God in Christ. Amen. The hardest sort of their denomination is music. They rather sing than preach the word of God. Mm -hmm. I was in a district after, after shout music was being played and after the service, half of the church left before the preacher got up and speak. He got offended one time. He, he went off. Like they, they want to shout for 40, 50 minutes. And then, and then it's hot in the building. And when I get to speak, half of the folks leave. They just care about music. Amen. So the musician get up in there. He like to usher the spirit. You got to play certain chords. No, but that's not how you usher the spirit. You know, you may know how to play the piano, but ushering the spirit ain't playing the right chords, brother. Amen. Ushering the spirit is being in obedience of God. Amen. He said, quench not the spirit. Amen. What does that mean? That means that don't be faithless. Mm. That means that when the spirit tell you to do something, that means you have to do it. Amen. You got these musicians, they ain't got the Holy Ghost, and they ain't got no power or anointing in their playing. They ain't driving out no spirits. They playing Ray Charles in the church. Mm. They playing Chris Brown in the church. Oh. That's your own words. You got these singers that lick their lips. They Chris Brown. They saw on that beautiful girl out there in the first row. They having sex with their choir members. Oh. That's your words. Oh. You got these women that want to be evangelists. Oh. They don't want to stop gossiping. Oh. They don't want to put down their wig. They want to quote Romans 3 and 13. Oh. That's your words. 
Notice how you can't do everything. Jay said you're guilty of all if you um break one commandment. That's why these brothers say, you know, you, you brother, you can't do everything of the Bible. It's because the Holy Ghost ain't cleaned you out yet. That's why. That's right. Brother, we're going to fall. Trust me, listen. We're going to make mistakes. But if you stay in this walk, you're going to get better, and God is going to take addictions away. You got people that don't believe that. They don't believe in the miracles of God no more. Because the real doctrine ain't there. The Father ain't up in there. They ain't seen the Father. They seen the devil transformed as the Father. See, <laughs> they seen the devil transformed as the father. Mm. He transformed himself as an angel of light, as a messenger of light, angel, messenger. He transformed himself as a messenger of light. Light, what does that mean? Light is what you see. It illuminates. It gives you the sight of what to avoid. Amen. So Satan manifests himself as a counselor, as a teacher. That's right. Your own words is listening to Andrew Tate. It's out some red pill. <laughs> Your worst is listening to a lot of these um, brothers on the internet. Amen. The devil would say certain things is right, but they won't guide you into the scripture. You got a lot of brothers, they, you know, they, they hear, oh man, I got a job, I got this, I got that. No Holy Ghost. Amen. Got anger inside their heart. Chasing out their women, materialistic, sleeping with all this, not doing what God say do. Mm -hmm. Judging their neighbor. Get a lot of these brothers, they want to be Andrew Tate or Kevin Samuels. They get on the internet. And the Lord told you not to judge. Pull the moat out your eye first. Amen. They listen to Andrew Tate. They get passionate. They want to preach Andrew Tate on the pulpit. Brother, I don't care if you if you call a woman, you get a lot of these brothers. They try to be bold now. It's, it's the extreme. You get an over-righteous brother, and you just get a foolish brother. One brother, he get on there, and, and he over-righteous. He, he, he get on there, and... um. He like, y'all women, you know, y'all need to dress like this, and y'all women, y'all need to dress like that, and y'all whores, and y'all this, and y'all that. Now, keep this in mind. If the brother preaching that in context, it's true. If you want to dress half naked and sleep with men, you're a whore. We're going to preach that on the pulpit. But I can't be a hypocrite. Amen. I can't judge. Amen. I can't seem like the, the real brother. A lot of these brothers, like, I'm real. Yeah, you real, all right, but you're not real deep-rooted in the scriptures. Key word is root. I'm not deviating. I'm in root. I'm in the root word. Root. We talking about root. Amen. Why am I going into all this? When Jesus say do his works, you got to follow all that he say do. God comes to you with his grace, his opportunity, out of the love that he asks for you to be saved. You confess out of your heart that I believe. Amen. And with the heart you believe unto righteousness. Your heart is who you are. That's right. You, you, you don't say it just so the preacher get out your face. When he say you believe unto righteousness, you believe what's right. That means if a false Jesus is being preached, you're not saved. A lot of people say, but, but God lured me out to the false church and he's been with me. No, God had mercy on you because you saw him. He saw your heart. God had mercy on you. Amen. Just like he had mercy to the brother at the bar and he got hit in the head with a bottle and went to the hospital and flatlined, but God brought him, brought him back. Amen. God brought him back in the midst of his drunkenness. God brought a whore back in the midst of her uh, stripping herself on a pole. Amen. God brought a murderer back in the midst of his killing. So God brought you back in the midst of your false church. So God had mercy on you and said, all right, now, you know, you know, um, you believe in me. I see you now, but this is the real me. You know, I need you to do this. And now I need you to do that. It's dangerous being preached to false Jesus because your expectations is something wrong. A lot of people got a lot of pain in their heart, so they latch on to God to make up that pain, which is something we're supposed to do. God's supposed to heal us and have us to be a better man, obviously. That's right. Because in church, we talk that it's just belief and don't go to hell. But then if you've got mental issues, you got to go to a crazy house. And, you know, if you need therapy, you got to go to therapy. No, God is a therapist. That's right. God would tell you got mama issues. God would tell you got daddy issues. Amen. God would tell you that these women sleep around because they ain't taught right. Amen. They don't love themselves. God would teach you all that. You got Proverbs for that. Amen. A lot of these brothers, they they think every woman is their wife is because, you know, um, they don't love themselves. Amen. They're not taught how to love. They liking some on the inside. They don't hold themselves to any value. They sleep with any woman. This brother got pain in his heart. This brother wasn't gifted with the looks that other people was gifted with or whatever the case may be. He was talked about his whole life and he's insecure. Amen. So he latched on to a woman. Yeah, yeah, that wisdom could be teach. People hear that wisdom through Andrew Tate and they latched on to that. And I understand. 
You know, you latch on to that wisdom, but at the end of the day, it's going to send you to hell because he's not preaching you baptism. The church supposed to preach to you things that's supposed to save your soul. Amen. I'm dealing with the root word. Listen, root, Amen. root. If you want the word to be rooted in you, you got to do the works of God. Amen. So he says, I'm going to show you my faith by my words. Amen. They said, do you believe? Of course I believe. I got baptized. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I believe. Bro, I've been praying and tearing for the Holy Ghost. I believe. Amen. I was weak and I prayed and God gave me strength. I believe. Amen. Lord, I fasted and prayed and he took my secret addiction away. I believe. I believe in the work of prayer. I believe in the things God told me to do because that makes me a disciple. Why you call me Lord, Lord, and you do not what I say? Amen. Excuse me, I'm losing my voice. You preach a John. Brother John. How can you call yourself a disciple you don't do? He said, blessed is not the man that just here, but do. He said, blessed are the pops that gave you. So they told Jesus that. He said, yeah, but rather blessed are those that hear the word of God and do it. Amen. Just ain't believe. It goes deeper than that. Give me back Ephesians chapter 3 verse 17. I just have to break that down. I'm not deviating. I'm Amen. expounding. Go ahead. That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. By obedience. By, by believing. By allowing him. By submitting yourself. Yes. You're not going to do everything, but you keep striving. That's right. And you do everything they tell you to do. You break the doors down to get baptized. You turn for the Holy Ghost. You pray every day. If you ain't getting it for four years, you believe that the fifth year come. If your faith weak, Lord, help my unbelief. Go ahead and continue. That ye being rooted. It's, say it again. Being rooted. Say it loud, brother. Being rooted. And? And grounded in love. Stop. It says love. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everybody love that love word. <laughs> Amen. Everybody love that word. The book of Ecclesiastes tells us, and you know, you don't have to go to that scripture. He said, we don't know all the love and hate that's presented before us, but the works of the righteous and the wise are in the hands of God. In other words, we don't know what true love and hate is. Love is, you know, <laughs> all the works of a man are clean in his eyes, but the Lord way of the spirits. In other words, he will know if it's a spirit of truth and a spirit of error. You see, cancel out of his hand. That's the works of the wise. Amen. All the ways of a man are right in his own eyes, but in the end they lead unto death. Scripture says the way of man is not in himself. It's not in himself to direct his own steps. He leans not on his own understanding, what he's been taught, what blood taught him, what his pride taught him, what his daddy taught him, Amen. what he feels in his heart, he lean not. Amen. He trusts in the Lord with all his heart. Amen. Lean not to his, not, not to his own understanding. God would direct his path. Amen. Hallelujah. And acknowledge God in all his ways. Amen. A lot of people want to say, I do it so bad. Don't say that. Man, you got that girl. What did you say to her? Man, I pray for a wife. Y'all don't like how weak that sound. <laughs> Even myself. In this date, I pray for a wife. Amen. Hallelujah. They said, but the Lord said, fine. Once again, brother, you can't find nothing. God ain't opened your eyes yet. Amen. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta understand what the Bible is talking. <laughs> Otherwise, you're gonna direct your own steps. Amen. You're gonna find a strange woman because you didn't please God. Amen. Because he said, a whore, what the, uh, what the scripture say in Ecclesiastes, Solomon said, a woman's heart is snares in nets, and those that pl don't please God shall be ensnared by you. Didn't please God, amen. Because you saw a woman that looked like Nicki Minaj, and you ran out to her because mm -hmm. your society said that was a good woman because loving hip hop and all the other garbage, amen. But God comes in and teaches you what a woman woman is, He opens the eyes of your understanding, amen. You try to find a wife according to your eyes, you're not told yet to see, that's right. He opens the eyes of your understanding. Amen. You say, now I see that a wife is not by her looks. She's able to follow God. She put God first. Amen. She submit. Amen. She's not argumentative. Amen. I see that I'm not ready to love Amen. because I'm in pain. God healed that pain inside my heart that I experienced in my life. That's right. Everybody got it. Amen. Everybody got it. That's right. Everybody got it. God heals your pain. 
then your eyes is open. Amen. You're like, I see that I love her so much, and now God is gonna bless me to take care of her. That's right. Don't get it. Don't don't lift your heart up with pride. God, you show you got a lot of brothers. They get some understanding. I know that a wife's supposed to cook and clean, but God ain't blessed them to take care of that woman. <laughs> they talk crazy. Amen. They dad told him a woman to talk back to you. You need to tell her to be quiet. You need to sit her down. They're not patient. They want to tell a woman to submit, but they're not. And they're not. The Lord haven't cleaned them out to be a man. Amen. A man is someone that put God first. Then God would say you need to work. You need to be gentle. You know when to be firm. You know when to be patient. You know how to prune your wife. You know how to take care of her and let her help you in certain things. You know how to deal with certain things. Certain things may seem corny to you, but when God opens your understanding, you understand why is it there? Because it's pride in your heart. A lot of gangsters out there on the street. Mm. A lot of prideful brothers is out there. Amen. God opens your understanding. Yes. Why I'm going with this? You got that love word. Y'all brothers don't know love. Love is God. Amen. A lot of people quote that. Love is God, so that means God love me. No. When, when the Bible said love is God, that means is that love, what you know love is, is in the hand of God. Amen. Once again, you got to understand. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God. God, Amen. the word was with God. That's right. The word was with him. God's word is a sword. Amen. It's with him. That's right. He uses it as his power. The scripture talks about the right arm of God, the power of God. It's his word. It's with him. That's right. He don't leave it nowhere. It's with him always. That's right. And the word was God. It is God because it's himself. That's right. What does that mean? That means when I preach the Bible, I'm preaching love. Amen. When God said get baptized, it's love. Amen. When God said stop being a whore, it's love. Amen. When God said leave that dude, it's love. Amen. When God said, leave that woman is love. Amen. When you go against that love, then there's hate in you that you think is love. That's, That's right. confusion in you. What is hate? It's the devil. The devil has taught you something that you're holding on to because of a weakness in you. You may have been abused as a child. You may haven't gotten enough attention. I don't know what it is. You know, every heart knows its own bitterness, as the scripture says. You know what's in your heart that causes you to be bitter. You know what's in your heart that causes you to fight against God. So if God tells you to do those things and you can't do it, you got to say, Lord, help me to come up to your word. The Lord going to come to you and say, you hate my word mm. because you're constantly stumbling at it. See, the Lord's warning you. You say, Lord, please come up in me and weed out what's inside of me that's causing me to stumble at your word. Amen. The Lord's going to come to you and say, um, the people you hang around, your perception. Amen. Amen. Let's itemize that for a little minute. We're going to break it down. I'm not deviating. I'm expounding. Amen. We're going to get to the persecution. Mm -hmm. I got to break things down for a minute. Because people, they, you know, the Bible speaks and people define the Bible. You got Webster Dictionary, um, you know, so they define the Bible based off the definitions they've been taught. Man have their definition of words. God has his definition. Man definition of faith is just believing. God definition of faith is works. And so when people argue faith, they say, no, Pastor, you're not, you're not saying faith. You're saying works. No, I am saying faith. God said the definition of faith is, is, is walking in his word and believing in it. That means you're hoping for it to happen. So hope is in that faith. God says the definition of love is him. And through him is characteristics. Amen. Through God is word and structure. Through God is creation. Amen. Through God is goodness. It, you know, you go on and on about that. But personally, but as I was about to say, as I'm going into, mm -hmm. as I wanted to expound on and break down into, there's something stopping you. If there's something stopping you from going deeper in God, the Lord's going to say, well, you hate my word. Mm -hmm. The Lord's going to say, there's something you need to, there's something that's inside of you that you need to clean out, which is the perception word. Amen. As we head into the devil can use spirits to shape your perception. There's dreams that you have that's given by these so-called celebrities or these elitists. And I'm not trying to sound too political or uh, scientific, but elitist is a person that's in high power. 
In other words, they tell you to look up, look up to them, and anyone that's not in my seat is lesser than. So that forms idolatry. That's why people think that when Beyonce says something, it's more important than what a normal man say. Mm. Scripture says a wise child is better than a foolish king. A wise child can say some more better than a foolish king. However, in America, we are programmed under elitists. So when Barack Obama say something, it's just more important than what our wise dad have to say. Amen. So we say, did you hear what Beyonce say? It's true. All that nonsense. So you have, an, so those elitists that's programmed you to listen to and to idolize them, to take your mind away from God and make you a covetous. In other words, make you desire the things they want you to desire and take your heart away from God. Mm -hmm. They shape your perception of what life is. So people think life is getting money. People think life is uh, sleeping with girls and having cars. So they go to God. They say, God, I hate life and you don't give me the things that makes me prosper. God is telling you that your perception is wrong. Because your perception is wrong, your heart, you hate the ways that I, you hate my ways. Amen. So what is the Lord saying? You hate my ways is because your perception was given to you by the world. That's why he tells you to love, not the world. You see how the Bible just correlates itself with each other? That's why I don't understand. It's a disservice when you just preach belief. I don't understand how you preach one scripture. You got this whole book. And the way they be preaching, and you think the book is only about three scriptures, not some holy belief. But people got real issues and problems, and God is telling you how to deal with it. Your perception has changed. Amen. Based on how you grew up, even in certain cultures, it's cultural to bow down to a certain statue. You got to abandon your culture, your culture that exalts itself against God. Amen. You got to abandon that perception, and that dream. So what happens is because that standard was implemented unto you, what's considered great and small according to the world is if you're closer to that standard or if you're further away from that standard. So what does that mean? That means is that throughout your whole life, those that were further away thinks they're a failure. So they go to God and say, you made me a failure. God looks at you and be like, he's so foolish. But I'm a gentle God. I'm lowly and meek in heart. I'm low and meek. I'm lowly in heart and meek. Amen. I'm gentle. By love and kindness, I've I drawn thee. So I'm going to come to you. I'm going to tell you, hey, my daughter, my son, I don't hate you. You believe that it's because your whole life you was programmed by Chris Brown, Nicki Minaj, and all these other type of rappers and singers is that to be great in the world, you got to be like them. You got to have all the money. I say son, totally different. And keep this in mind. God's not just saying that. Um, if you actually abide by the ways of God, you will have a prosperous health. Amen. Now, I talk about persecution. Yeah, you're going to suffer persecution, but the people that suffer in persecution, that persecution is the reason. <laughs> That persecution and the devil is the reason why they are not joyful and in pain. Amen. Because when persecution ain't happen, your life peaceful. You know, you 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 not you don't care about what people say about you no more. <laughs> you praying for stuff God giving it to you. Amen. The devil may come to you, but you like say that rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Ain't your mind clear? Amen. People come to you. You got favor amongst men. People give you a promotion. God teach you, Lord, I want to learn how to play the piano. When this anointing is on you, you needed that no man teach you. People say, you need a teacher. Well, I can't find a teacher. I can't afford a teacher. So God says, my son, my daughter, I'm going to teach you myself. Amen. Because you saw out after my anointing. Amen. And anointing is in you. Hallelujah. And you need not that no man teach you. Amen. And because you need not that no man teach you, I'm going to teach you myself. Amen. Now keep this in mind. The Lord begin to teach you. He says, play with more structure. He may say it through certain words. Somebody may come to you and be like, it'd be shocking to you. You may be walking and somebody may look at you and be like, I don't know. I just, hey man, um, yeah, I've been practicing the piano. He can't, he don't know I do nothing else. A homeless man may walk to you, may be playing the piano. He don't know I do nothing else. But he get that certain sense in his mind at that moment. He like, bro, I used to play the piano when I was a kid, but I deviated and I went into the world and got drunk. Practice on your skills and do this and, and do that because he give you some knowledge and you be like, it have to be God. Amen. Somebody come to you and say, don't be overplaying, play according to the singer. He give you some knowledge and you and they just be overplaying. And, and um, he be giving you some knowledge. You have to say that that's of God. Amen. Everybody else, you have you have certain people that um 
They say that if I wish I had known this at age 20, that it took me 40 years to do, and they be expounding it over to people, and that video just come on your channel. That's a blessing by God. Amen. You got people that been learning how to play, and I use the piano for exact example. It could be cooking. It could be anything that's not sinful. God begin to teach you your gift. Amen. And you have joy in that. That's right. Why I got to dress a certain type of way to get a woman when the Lord is going to bless me with one? He yeah. going to open my understanding. Amen. He going to help me to find. Amen. The scripture says, they that find it a good wife. Bo has found. But last time I checked, Ruth chose God and God ordered his steps for, for him to be found, Amen. for her to be found. God, it's like God doing all the work. That's right. But I'm using my free will to put my faith in God. Amen. And what happens? God, that blessing began to happen. Why do I need to talk a certain way? Why do I need to say a certain type of joke? God put people around me that love me regardless. Amen. God put people around me that love me regardless. Amen. I, I don't have to fear that somebody going to leave. I don't have to fear that somebody going to... um. Talk about me. Amen. I'm not insecure. Amen. For the people whose perception, they was closer to that image. Mm. Some people got looks, they, they could talk, they got fame, they got money, they closer to the perception, they don't want to let it go. Amen. But they come to God and they don't believe that they're not, they believe they're nothing without it. Amen. They are insecure and they cover their insecurity with money. Amen. They cover their insecurity with slander, such as roasting the chicken. They cover their insecurity with uh, flirting. They cover their insecurity with fighting. Mm. God tell them to let it cease. Amen. God heal their heart. God tell them that perception came based off the life you grew up in. Let it go. It's a hard process because it's who you are. Amen. But God has to come in and you have to be in that partner's wheel. He's going to break you down and if you're patient. That's right. You're patient. You walk this walk by patience. That's right. When you're patient, he's going to mold you and shape you. So you're going to see a brother, you're going to want to give him a handshake. Amen. You're going to want to help him. Amen. You're going to look at that sister and say, she wearing tights. She got a big butt. She wearing them, um, them tight shorts. She's showing her um, genitals um, imprint through her tight um, little underwear shorts or whatever she like to wear. But then I want to throw up looking at it because it's an abomination unto Amen. God. Amen. See, you was getting stronger. You could resist the temptation, but that temptation was there. You have to fast and pray. Now you hate it. Because God don't change your heart around. Isn't that beautiful? How beautiful are the riches of his grace? Hallelujah. When you preach grace, you have to preach it all. Hallelujah. I'm not deviating. I'm expounding. Amen. So you hate the words of God. It's because your perception is changed. Let's go back to that perception word. Your perception is changed. Mm -hmm. So God has to tell you, listen, lean not to your own understanding. Acknowledge me in all your ways, Amen. and I will begin to direct your path. Some, you know, you may have some days where Satan gets into your mind because Satan is going to attack your perception and your logic, and you're operating, putting down your logic. And I don't care what anybody to say that's the hardest thing to do. Mm. It's to operate for those that are smart too, um, in their own logic, because you know, for those that are smart, er, you know, I don't class myself as smart or fool, but in the world sense, you got some people that are smart. You know, and how you know you're smart? Because you've been told you're smart, and when you go around people, you can easily understand things that they can't understand. So you really focus on your sight. So I used to analyze people by saying, if I see it is real, if I want to see things to what I see, if I if if I see that I'm confused, I say I'm confused, and I call that humbleness because I saw that it was confused. As I saw that it was confusing unto me. You got people that say if it's confusing unto me, then I humble myself. No, he wants to see that it's confusing to him. Anything he doesn't see, he thinks is foolishness unto him. The scripture says the spiritual things that man would call foolishness is because he's going by his sight. Smart people would say, as I, you know, my brother would tell me to consider this and consider that, I'd be like, I don't see it. I don't see it. Mm -hmm. How can this work? I don't see it. Amen. But then, however, I was reading the Bible. The stuff I did see, I was holding on to it. But I kept, you know, thing, you know, I, my sight wasn't all the way there. And so I have to learn to consider the things that I cannot see. Amen. That, that's just me personally. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So you got a lot of people, you're smart or whatever the case may be, or inside the world, their perception is molded and shifted. And when you trust in God, you have to let go of the things that you cannot see. Yes, sir. So when God comes to you and say, listen, you have to let go of everything. 
That's why you stay in prayer. Amen. That's why you stay fasting. It's not Amen. just believing. It's easy to believe. Jesus said the whole world gonna hate you. Man, if I told a sinner, hey, bro, you're going to heaven, just believe in Jesus. Amen. And you're going to kill somebody, I tell them that all the time. They hate Amen. that question because they know that question coming. They say if you believe with all your heart, 100%, that if you believe and 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 and, and, you, and then you're going to heaven. They said people don't all the way believe. That's why they don't go to heaven. But I believe 100% in my heart that once saved, always saved. Exactly. I said, well, brother, you just can fully convince yourself that you're a fool and you're going to hell when you die. Yeah. Do you know how many brothers are fully convinced and they're going to hell? The Bible is before us, but you got to be taught in the scriptures. That's right. So you have to be taught by God. Amen. You have to allow the Lord to clean you out. So when this man humbles himself and he allows, and the God begin to change his perception, God begin to shape him fully. It's a patience. You got to be patient. You got to be patient. Amen. And he stays still, as the scripture says. He's rooted and grounded in love, in God, because God is love. Thank you, Lord. I'm got to break down the scripture to you. A lot of people say love is hugging and kissing and having sex. That's not love. Mm -hmm. A lot of people think love is companionship. That's not love either. You can have, the scripture says, though the wicked join hand in hand, they should not be unpunished. It says that come out from among them. Love ain't companionship. Companionship is just hanging with somebody. You got to hang with the right people. That's right. You know, love ain't just dying for somebody. They said, Jesus, what greater love is this that a man died for you? Jesus died for us because all the things that he do is love because there's no evil in him. He died for us out of love because he wants to save us. Amen. But you can die for a woman that ain't your wife. You got soldiers out there dying in the army for a country that supports raping homosexuals and killing. That ain't love. It's foolishness. That's right. Anyway, so when God began to open your uh, mind and he began to shape you mm -hmm. and you begin to agree to it. Now, once again, you hate the word, as I said previously, God began to teach you the word mm -hmm. um, and the Lord revealing to you hate the word. And then you come to the Lord and say, Lord, I don't want to hate it because I do hate it. My, I, every time you speak, I get irritated. I feel down. I just feel like nothing's ever good enough for you. I just feel this, Lord, and, and you forcing me to do something I can't possibly do. The Lord said, change your perception and be patient. Be patient. Amen. I with you. Be patient. Amen. Just continue to strive. Get up. You fail. Continue to strive. <laughs> then you become rooted and grounded. What does also mean to become rooted and grounded? Because you got some brothers that do this. It's when you deviate. No, no, excuse me. What does also mean to become rooted and grounded, excuse me, is that you say that, Lord, what you teach, I will obey. If you say woman preaching, I can't preach. I don't care what the feminists say because the feminist movement came in the church. Women believe is that if you tell them to submit, then they believe it's oppression. The devil got into their mind is that the devil taught them that submission is oppression. Mm -hmm. They don't understand what it means to be great. Women think new and more is good. The scripture says, if you gather more than that is meat, you will come into poverty. Mm -hmm. More don't mean good. Good means doing something that's of God. Amen. Sometimes doing little and knowing what you are is good. Amen. They say, I want a man. I got more, more, more. Why well, can't find a man? Man may want you to do less. Mm -hmm. I come, you know, they do too much. That's why you got a lot of these women that do too much. Amen. Sometimes getting stuff new ain't good. Sometimes sticking with the old and just working with it is good. Amen. So it ain't about just new and more. That's what the feminist movement preached unto them. They got into their mind and they made them a covetous. That's why women covet. Women covet and they idolaters because they idols teach them to covet. Like Beyonce and all these other different type of idols. So what, what's going to happen? They come into the church and they're going to covet in the church. They say, Lord, you're oppressing me. I want to come up high. But then this woman right here says, Lord, I was born inside the world and I'm willing to submit it to your plan. I'm going to submit, God. Teach me how to submit and give me the strength to submit. And I'm going to continue with prayer and fasting. You know what happens? This person is rooted and grounded in love. Amen. That's how the word began to take root in you. As I say, woman pastors is going to drinking and getting drunk. It's going to leaving your wife that ain't your wife. The Lord says, if you're married, then you're bound by the law. The woman is bound to the husband as long as the law lives. You got a lot of people that says that two sinners can't make a, a covenant. Well, that's a lie. Because the Bible says that um, if two people, if one finds God, then the man can draw the unsanctified wife. You know, the husband can sanctify the unsanctified wife. Well, that's weird. Then how are they married then? Well, anyway, that's, that's besides the point. 
you come in and it's a hard process. You may have kids with that person, whatever the case may be, but this person loved God more than all that, which is a true soldier in the Lord. And I commend that. It's a hard thing to do. Marriage is a hard topic. However, it's the truth. You got to leave them. Amen. She ain't your wife. She got to go. She ain't your husband. She got to go. You can't have one or two. You, excuse, you can't have two husbands. You can't have two wives. Amen. It says, so you supposed to, so I'm supposed to just leave my husband and my kids and go back to my husband who's married to somebody else? No, you can be separated. That's right. The Bible says be separated. The scripture says, he said, be separate, be reconciled to your husband. So you can be separated. You just got to get into prayer. That's right. This, this is the cost of the gospel for some of the people out there. But this person comes in and say, I love God more than that. They're going to pray. They separate from their wife and their husbands, whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. uh, they say, Lord, I'm willing to follow your word. And they become rooted and grounded in love. Amen. And then this person grows up. So when persecution happens, they don't fall. A lot of people fall to persecution because they didn't leave their second wife yet. Because the devil won't come to your wife. Your husband crazy. He talks and he's ready to die for the gospel. And then the devil use your wife, your second wife, to pull you out of the faith. Mm -hmm. This person want to teach. The devil make you, um, I don't know, too big-headed. Mm -hmm. You teach the wrong people. Amen. The scripture says God added to the church. The Lord ain't adding to your church because you can't be a preacher. Amen. So you can't say you're teaching God's people. You're teaching people of the devil. Amen. The devil had his people up in there. Or you got some sincere people that's of the devil presently, but they sincere. And you corrupted them. So you can't endure persecution and tribulation if you're not doing all that God say do, because the word has no root up in you. Amen. So when your mama talk about you, when your daddy talk about you, you gotta stay patient in God. Amen. You gotta do everything that God say do when that flood comes. That flood could be persecution. You know why you fall? Because you're a foolish man. In Matthew chapter 7, the 20, around the 20 is some verse, around 21 through 28. He talks about a foolish man didn't do what he said, even though he heard it. He didn't do it. Even though I tarry long, I just got a lot of passion to keep speaking. Amen. But um, speaking. this man, he didn't do all that God told him to do. So he failed. He may seem like he was doing well. That's why you get a lot of these brothers, they fall. They may fall in 40 years. They may have a good run. In four, they may have a 40-year good run. Mm -hmm. And then they fell in their 41st year. You know, so they had a good run. Then all of a sudden you see these pastors falling. It's because, you know, it's their time to fall. Mm -hmm. God told them, you didn't, you didn't do what I tell you to do? Well, you're going to fall when that flood come. How am I going to protect you? You didn't do what I tell you to do. There's no peace to the wicked. I'm not going to protect the wicked. I, I judge the wicked. Amen. The script, Jesus said, God said, I would not by no means pardon the sins of the wicked. Amen. He said, showing mercies unto thousands that love me and visiting upon the children. Visiting upon the children and the um visiting the visit upon the children and the grandchildren the sins of the father. Amen. Showing mercy unto thousands that love me. Amen. The Lord ain't gonna pardon you because you didn't do what he said to do. So he allowed that flood to come on your life. Amen. 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 A lot of people may not like this word today, but it's essential. We're gonna come into the time where the market of beasts is gonna come. People gonna yank you out of the houses, people gonna say you can't eat. You're going to have people dying of starvation. You're going to have people dying of thirst. You're going to have people betraying mother and brother. You're going to have people betraying son and father. You're going to have people that's going to try to kill you. They're going to kill you in secret. They're going to poison your drink. They're going to shoot you with a gun. They may torture you. If you can't endure the little things, like Jesus said, this be hard in a green tree. What are you going to do when it's dry? When it's hard for you to endure slander, when it's hard for you to do when people put you away from their company, how are you going to do this? And I'm telling you, for those that's foolish, they rage and they confident, as the scripture says. If you don't have this Holy Ghost up in you, you're going to fall. Amen. You're going to be deceived. You're going to take that mark. Amen. The word has to be in you. Amen. It has to be deep rooted up in you. That's right. It has to take root by God. They say, how can the word be planted up in me? He said, any, any plant that my heavenly father has not planted. God has to plant you in. Amen. You have to abide on the vine. He said, but I abide on the preacher. Believe. Because you obeyed and you listened. You believed in God's word. And you continue steadfastly in the doctrine. Amen. That's how you take root. You take root. That brings it back to Matthew chapter 13 and verse 21. 
When, pers when tribulation and persecution arises because of the word, by and by he is offended because the word had no root in him. He was joyful of the word. He was joyful of the blessings. He said, don't preach that preacher. That's too mean. Preach blessings. Preach, um, preach that nice stuff. But he didn't learn all the other stuff. And so stuff happened in his life and he hate God for it. Well, if he, if he would have stead, steadfast in apostles doctrine. And listen, another thing too, the reason why some of these brothers don't know, a lot of folks say God didn't teach me enough. Well, once you have the knowledge to seek, God is going to hold you accountable to the things you don't know. Amen. Because had you sought, he would have taught you. And God's going to say, seek me. Because when you seek God, he's going to begin to tell you things that you need to know. But if you have knowledge to seek and you're lazy and you don't know, you held accountable for it. Amen. So you fall when you're offended because you didn't seek. You're playing 2K all day. You're playing Call of Duty all day. You're on your phone listening to TikTok. You're playing on Barbie and cans and dolls all day. You're not teaching your children. You know what happens? You don't know enough. When persecution happens and tribulation, and listen, tribulation can mean that you may get cancer. You're angry at God. Tribulation may mean you may lose your job. You're angry at God. Mm -hmm. Tribulation may mean because of the word, um, you know, people kick you out. You're angry at God. Where I'm going to go, Lord? You're angry at God. The word has no root up in you. Joe got angry. He was a righteous man. You may get mad, but you sin not. You may get mad, but you go to the Lord in prayer and say, Lord, I'm angry right now, but increase my faith. Amen. I read what you did with Job, and I'm not going to question you. You told me this for my learning. Instead of me saying, I'm going to be like Job, you show me Job so I can learn from him. Because I know that though weeping may happen in the night, joy comes in the morning. Amen. Lord, please speed up your morning, God. If, if, if I have any say, Lord, please speed up your morning, but let not my will, but your will be done. Amen. Let the word take root in you. The reason why I went and deviated is because a lot of people may hear this message and go back to their false church because they think they're in the right way. So I spell on certain things to get, have you to understand is that if you're not in this, and if those things apply to you, don't, don't, don't let your heart reflect, reject it. Examine yourself. Listen to the preacher and say he named a lot of things. Our preacher was in the scriptures and say that I need to work on it. Let me pray on it. Amen. And then seek after God and he'll begin to spout more into you. Amen. And that is my message. Hallelujah. And their persecution. And their tribulation. I didn't know how this message was going to come out. Thank you, Father. He gave me a message, and I said, brother, how am I going to preach an hour about persecution? I said, you know, I'm going to tell the people, you know, um, how you going to do persecution? How you going to do getting killed and shot for the word? And do through that, pray and have faith. And a lot of people may look and be like, that's ridiculous. A lot of people may hear this on the podcast and be like, that's ridiculous. But I prayed, and I prayed, and I prayed. I don't mean this to brag, but I prayed, and I trusted in God. I prayed for a message. My message was to come out of um, what I, when I, the, the persecution came to me two days ago, and I was going to come out of uh, John chapter 18, I believe, around the 25th verse when Peter denied on Jesus. But, you know, about 30 minutes before the service start, God gave me Matthew chapter 13 and verse 21. Amen. And he, and he had his way. And that's, and that's what preaching is, you know, letting God have his way and being taught. You know, there's a free will that you got to operate in. It. That's the works that you got to show. Is you showing your free will and abiding in God and allowing God to teach by studying because it's good to study and, you know, and do all that God tell you to do and you'll be right around that you can be used as a tool. Amen. You know? So, yeah, in a sense, God does everything, but God gives you the option to walk in that belief so he can do it for you. That's right. So he gives you the understanding. That free will is you doing it. So when God said, go out there and do, use your free will to go out there and do. But have faith, and he's going to lay it before you. And he's going to direct your path. Amen. All righty, so that is my message. And I thank all those that, that was listening. Um, now the word to take root up in you so you can do persecution and tribulation inside your life. Um, you know, and that is our message. And, you know, please stand for prayer.